welcome to our first virtual sanctuary tourist hike. And uh, I'm sorry you can't be here in person, but we're looking forward to showing you a glimpse of the Sinkion Wilderness and the walk to Bear Harbor. So this um, map or chart here that I'm displaying shows the motivation for the beginning of sanctuary forest. This is the extent of old growth forest in 1947, and by 1988, there were only remnants of the old growth forest left. So although the forest has recovery, is in recovery, and there's a lot of second growth that's filling in this space, uh, this was a real motivation to try to save the last remnant old growth. So in 1987, Sanctuary Forest was formed to try to make an effort to purchase land that had some of the remaining old growth uh, trees and put it into preserve. Uh, so we're working, continuing to work to not only maintain the old growth forest, but also to restore the regrowing forest. And we've also have focused a great deal of attention on water and the uh, holding the water back in the dry period of time so that it slowly percolates down and keeps the fish population alive and the streams flowing, enough water for wildlife and for humans as well. So there's a forbearance program where we store water that's collected in the winter in the high flow times and used in the summer. So that's uh, a brief overview of the focus of Sanctuary Forest. There's information on our website at sanctuaryforest.org and I definitely encourage you to uh, investigate what we're doing and appreciate any support that we can get. These hikes that we give are supported through local businesses and we appreciate all of their support. We also get private donations and anyone who's used this uh, video and is motivated to make a donation, please feel free and we certainly appreciate all donations any amount is helpful so uh, i want to introduce john jennings is standing next Thank to me you. and he's our hike leader today and uh, as a retired ranger was the first ranger here in the sinkion wilderness state park and has a long legacy of time here he's not I mean, he's much younger than he looks. <laughs> so uh, he's been a friend of mine for a great deal of time, and uh, he and I have spent a lot of good time here. And one other thing that I wanted to mention was that this land is the home of the Sinkion people. There is adjoining land that is the, uh, under the Intertribal Council's governance, and uh, I feel throughout the time that I spend here a real connection with the people who are still alive today and whose ancestors uh, lived here and are part of this place. So uh, enough said and let's begin the hike. <laughs> Good morning. I'm uh, retired ranger John Jennings and I will be your your uh, hike leader for today for our annual hike called the magic of the lost coast this is a hike where we start here near our visitor center and historic ranch house the needle rock house and we travel south about two or three miles to another historic site called bear harbor and by historic the the evidence we see today is of early pioneer uh, homesteading, uh, lumber mill operation, and uh, resource extraction along the north coast, which, which took place all up and down the north coast in the Redwood country. Uh, it started shortly after the gold rush uh, uh, and the opening up of California in the mid 1800s and timber production is still important today. But these little uh, remote posts like Needle Rock were once the spearheads, once the entry points into the county. The early pioneers came first by trail, then by sea, 
and then they moved inland. So it's hard to imagine that there was once a small town here that supported this as a port of call to ship in uh, supplies for homesteading, such as, uh, you know, manufactured goods, finished products, uh, and they also shipped out various lumber products such as railroad ties, grape stakes, shingles, wool from sheep, uh, eggs, dairy products like cheese and butter that went to San Francisco where the bulk of the population was located. And this abrupt change in uh, California was brought about by the uh, gold rush in 1849 and before then, we had uh, many groups of Native Americans throughout California, like about a couple of hundred. And our local group was known as the Sinkion uh, Native Americans. And they populated an area of about 30 or 40 miles of the coastline in this part of California. And then in the winter time in the fall, they migrated over the coastal hills to the main fork of the Eel River, where there was a vast salmon run that they, they also harvested. So we have layers of history on this land, and um, we're hoping to share that with you today. Shall we begin the hike? Yes. <laughs> okay. As part of the uh, layers of history, this old photo from the late 1800s uh, shows a little town that was once here, the town of Needle Rock. It had its own uh, elementary school. It was a port of call for the interior of Southern Humboldt County for towns such as uh, Bryceland, Redway, Garberville, Alder Point. And supplies came in and uh, products went out. This uh, structure on the cliff was the uh, loading chute for hauling the products to the ships and, uh, and bringing things to shore. We're gonna look at some more pictures of that. So you see there were quite a few buildings here, 10 or 15 buildings. And this was mainly active through the uh, summer months of the year. And then in the winter, uh, the various people that worked here would go back to their homesteads and uh, work on their personal projects in those locations. And we'll uh, show a few more pictures. This is the, uh, this is what the loading chute looked like. It was operated by steam. We see the uh, old, some of the old buildings in the background. This shows the terraces uh, behind me when they were used as store yards for uh, tan bark, fence posts, and so forth. Here's the uh, early version of the Needle Rock Ranch House right here. Here's another uh, close-up of the loading chute. And this kind of mixes the new and the old of that time. Here's, here is a bundle of uh, railroad ties going down on a cable to a steam schooner, a coastal steam schooner. And in the background is a strictly a two-masted sailing vessel. So this is right at the threshold between the age of sail and the age of steam. So this is right in the early 1900s, this particular shot. And here's an example of, of one of the uh, one of the employees here at the mill. This uh, Jed Cohen. The Cohen family were uh, an early family that uh, lived at Shelter Cove, north of here, about eight miles, which is also a uh, an, an early port of call. So he worked up there. Uh, worked many jobs throughout the woods, and he worked worked here in the summers. So this is part of the uh, fabric of the. 
Cohen family that is still in Humboldt County today and their early roots back to the 1800s. So just some of, some of the examples of the layers of history that are here at uh, Needle Rock and now it just looks like a sleepy ghost town and it's reverting to wilderness. In the background we see the uh, uh, another historic building, the, uh, the barn, the dairy barn that was here at Needle Rock and it's getting a rebuild. This is the uh, second rebuild. The, uh, the park was established back in uh, 1975 and these buildings were first refurbished. The remnants of the, the buildings from the old town were refurbished and preserved in the early 1980s and now in uh, 2020 it's time for another facelift on them so uh, uh, they're not being modernized they're just being uh, uh, recited and preserved for another 50 or 60 years as, as a uh, reminder of the layers of history that took place here and speaking of layers of history as we look in the background, we see very uh, forested mountains and uh, the early practices of the Sinkion people uh, and the early pioneers was to have prescribed burns every year to maintain the prairie, the open prairie areas for the grazing of uh, wild animals and also native uh, uh, cattle and sheep that were brought in. And this uh, photo here that I'm holding shows how uh, back 150 years ago how open these hills were for grazing and today they're covered in a thick forest main, mainly Douglas fir trees we're looking at a good portion of the lost coast and north of here is uh, uh, the King Range National Conservation Area it covers about uh, 30 miles of the of the Lost Coast, and we see the the point up here is the the coastal community of of uh, Shelter Cove, and uh, the the and then we are in the Sinkion Wilderness State Park that also covers about 25 or 30 miles of the Lost Coast. And in addition, there's a total, the total Lost Coast is about 100 miles of the California coastline, which is about 1,000 miles long, so it's roughly 10% of California, where the coastline was never developed. And this is a, a strange phenomenon here in California, one of the most populous states in the United States, and especially the coastline, to have 10% of that coastline that was passed by by modern technology and modern development and it's because we are in part of uh, Cape Mendocino, a very rugged uh, island of land, a peninsula that juts out from the mainland into the Pacific and it was just too rugged for development and it was passed by uh, quite a bit by early pioneers, by modern road builders, and all but the hardy who now come out here for backpacking and exploring a portion of the Lost Coast.
they row, there's a crew at uh, the shore in a rowboat. They row out a heavy duty rope that's twice that long. Oh man. They bring it back to shore. They get it up to the winch in that house. They turn the winch on and that rope drags the cable oh. out to the ship where the it's tied the off end. up on in the mast. Yeah. And then on that <laughs> cable, they run the, the baskets that are on a pulley mm -hmm. up and down that uh, cable back and forth with uh, whatever goods they want to do. Each basket load would have about maybe at the most a ton. And these ships would hold, uh, I don't know, maybe up to 100 tons. So you're talking wow. about 100, 100 yeah. times they would have to, to do that. Uh, I'm just guessing at that, but, you know, give you an idea of scale. Mm -hmm. And, whoop, pelican's hitting the bait fish. So that's surf fish, surf smelts, are in there on the beach. Oh, yeah. Once you catch a petroleum. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, this is, this is what's going on here, just like that other canyon we saw up there, uh, that's kind of revegetated now. This one is, is new, and it's mm -hmm. taking, trying to take this uh, road. And this, this is uh, the main reason why they haven't reopened this road, is there's, debate about how to fix it and if if they can go inland here and, and make another road even in the wilderness designation and and uh, political uh, considerations and an ounce or two of willpower and money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're continuing on our Magic of the Lost Coast nature hike. We're now about halfway from Needle Rock to Bear Harbor, and we're stopped at another uh, beautiful viewpoint of the Lost Coast looking north. And I wanted to point out kind of a continuation of what we were talking about before, of uh, those uh, mountains at the far, far point. You can see how there's grasslands growing up the mountains. That's at a place called Spanish Flats in the uh, King Range National Conservation Area. So just imagine that the way the mosaic of plant life on those mountains would have been the mosaic of plant life on the closer mountains that are here to your right. And then looking up the coastline, right along the face of the cliff, you see a rather large rock near the cliff up there about... Uh, Mile. It's the first main rock on the coastline. Does everybody see that? Yeah, flat that, one. that is Needle Rock. So, if, and it was named by these early sea captains because it looked like a needle from the ocean. But they named that before the 1906 earthquake. Before the 1906 earthquake, the top of that rock was as tall as the cliffs that it's adjacent to. And that's one of the things 
that happened during that massive California earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. Now that San Andreas Fault, which is a major earthquake fault in California, dividing the Pacific uh, plate of the Earth with the North American plate, runs right through here, and the last place it touches land is at the tip of Shelter Cove, at the flat tip that's going out to the left. And when that earth, before that earthquake hit, there was a wide beach like the one we see below us that went from here, from Needle Rock, all the way to Shelter Cove. And that's how they got, uh, that was the trail. That was the trail to follow with your herd of cattle, uh, your products, anything you wanted, go back and forth between these two ranching areas. After the 1906 earthquake, those uh, tremendous landslides fell in the ocean, all of that, all of that is sparked from all that huge uh, mountain there was uh, created. So it's just a, a, another deal of geology in motion. And, and they're saying on the California coastline with the, with the combination of the upward lifting and the ocean getting deeper, that we're losing approximately 300 feet of coastline in 100 years. And in places like this, just with you know my 40 years here, I've seen uh, massive uh, landslides that are maybe a 40 acre cubic acres fall off of these cliffs. So uh, I can see how uh, you could lose 100 feet in in 100 years. So that's uh, that's about the coastal erosion, uh, the plant vegetation change over time with the lack of uh, recurring wildfires and again layers of history. So onward to Bear Harbor. Friends, we're looking at the uh, south portion of the uh, Lost Coast, and uh, and the public land extends beyond that furthest point, and it wraps into the next uh, 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 canyon at Usall, about another seven or eight miles from the uh, high point down there, which is called the Jackass Cliffs. And we're particularly looking at this closest rock with all the white bird droppings on it. This is another early lumbering uh, pioneer uh, attempt, and this rock is named Morgan Rock, and the big white step is, was cut into it by mankind, and they had a superstructure on that step, and cables going up to the cliff for lowering uh, lumber products, etc., down to the step, and then there was a chute that hang off the side of that step where a ship would pull under the chute and they would slide things down there like the railroad ties, fence posts, uh, bundles of shingles, that type of thing and they would somehow catch them at the bottom. I don't know how they made them stop <laughs> but it was, maybe there was a rope on the back of the bundle to slow it down. But that's called uh, Morgan Rock and there's a place where you can uh, 
uh, hiked up along that cliff and had a little saddle and there's an old winch laying in that uh, half buried in that saddle and out on the rock there's a lot of these pieces of big chain and big iron uh, eyeballs pounded into the rock and a few pieces of uh, very white lumber so and that's mainly uh, cormorants that nest on the on these rocks here we also have uh, the murs and the uh, pigeon gullamonks uh, that nest uh, along here so morgan rock and a fishing boat just beyond it that's jared he runs a little party boat from uh, shelter cove so they have six able-bodied fishermen and the captain and uh, look at them reel them in boy they're catching them <laughs> good day Our hike has moved further down the trail. We're now nearly to Bear Harbor, where there was an, where there's another layer of uh, pioneer history. There was actually a railroad that was brought into this canyon from the sea, and they brought the locomotive, the tracks, the cars inland, and the railroad went 17 miles up this canyon and over the mountains to Highway 101, what became one day Highway 101 near Piercy. And in this canyon, they had to winch the railroad and the cars up the steep hill at the head of this canyon. And they used a three track uh, mechanism that opened to four tracks in the middle. And it was called the incline where a full car being lowered down the incline with a series of a pulley would pull up the empty car that was down here at the bottom. And this is located just up the canyon here, about a quarter of a mile, the old incline. And that's the only place on the railroad where uh, the railroad tracks are actually in place. This, this, Golden Cypress is this Golden Cypress. Wow. This is 1962. This makes the house look blue. Uh, maybe it was blue, but it was white when uh, I saw it. And it was about, when I moved here in 1975, it was about, it was standing, but it had been fairly well uh, trashed. This is the home that this uh, former owners of this ranch, Bear Harbor Ranch, the Hap Bill Happy family uh, built and owned for, I don't know, 40, 40 years or so. And they, all this rock work, uh, beautiful gardens, and they uh, had no children of their own, but they kind of adopted children from uh, Garberville or the gr greater area and they would these kids would live out here for the summer and they would they were like uh, adopted parents you know and there are a lot of wonderful stories about uh, their stewardship of the ranch and this 
pond and this was a dam that of course uh, in those days there were many more fish and the fish would come up and spawn and after they were done spawning they would close the dam and trap all the baby steelhead up river and they would grow in this pond and the rule was only kids could fish so <laughs> but uh, and then so if we peel back the pages of time this is what was built here with those two money guys here in the Bear Harbor Gulch. So this would be up on that hill where I said the tra trail went, looking this way. And this is all uh, cabins and, and production buildings. Here, here it is showing some of the material. We're talking about the... Uh, uh, tan bark, the railroad ties. Uh, here's the railroad track going through here, just the way we walk down this trail. And then it turns out here to go out this uh, hill and out uh, to the pier. So they shipped uh, many things besides. Here's a boat too, a rowboat for getting the cable out to the to the ship, uh, and even a birdhouse. Or maybe that's a mailbox. I don't know. <laughs> Here's look at the power line. So at some time they had a telegraph or something and made their own power down here. So, and of course lots of grass going all the way up the hills. Now, and we were talking about more about Needle Rock and here, but this is this is how this uh, material came down that road we went on for these wagons. These are horses. This is tan bark. You see the curled up bark being uh, stored here? And this is tan bark too. This looks like the same team of horses, but they used horses and mules. And uh, they even had Oh, here's interesting. They're they're loading the tan bark from the wagon onto a railroad car to go out on the pier to be uh, loaded on the ship. That's a little railroad car. These railroad cars are like, you know, 15 feet long, 15 or 20 feet long and four or five feet wide. Cordwood is four foot long. And this, this right here, I do believe, is the canyon, Railroad Canyon, that the incline went up. So, uh, we find horseshoes in the ground sometimes from the big draft horses, big ones, and we find mule shoes too. So, the other, uh, just little layers of history.
friends, we're, we've now reached the uh, destination of our hike. We're at Bear Harbor. Uh, again, there was layers of history here. It's a great little, uh, little cove on the Lost Coast. And once upon a time, there were pioneering lumbermen that had the idea they could build a pier here. Here's an old picture of the pier. And up on the uh, hillside, you see part of the old railroad track sticking out that went out on the pier. So they were going to build a pier here and have a railroad that ran 17 miles into uh, where Highway 101 is located now, where the really big redwoods live. And the uh, guys that had this idea were these two guys. And they, they look like they don't belong. They're dressed in suits and ties and they're standing on the beach of remote Bear Harbor. They don't belong. The only thing they carry is money. They are the money guys from San Francisco that had the idea of this, uh, this crazy enterprise to uh, put a modern railroad into a very remote place and make uh, what they thought would be millions of dollars. So here's a lumber schooner all loaded down. Here's the... Uh, the pier and the uh, apparatus for loading it, loading again with the cable out to the to the boat. This is the uh, locomotive that was on the uh, railroad, uh, Bear Harbor Railroad Company. It says this is the little locomotive that uh, went the 17 miles over to Highway One with the, and they were actually bringing the finished lumber from vicinity of Piercy to Bear Harbor to ship out to San Francisco. Uh, interesting side note is when the, all of this iron and material, all of these things were made in San Francisco, shipped up here in pieces, brought ashore and reassembled and then they pioneered a railroad going inland. But to start things off, they accidentally dropped the, the locomotive in the ocean right out here. So they had to get, the first thing they had to do is get that back. <laughs> this uh, railroad is through very precarious country. And uh, over half of it was on trestles. This is how they would build trestles through all the deep canyons going between here and uh, across the several sets of mountains to Highway 101 where so 17, 17 mile railroad and uh, lots of engineering feats. Here's how they winched the cars up this first mountain up what was called an incline. Uh, so it's an, it was an amazing uh, amazing amount of ingenuity and looking south from here is the rest of the uh, Lost Coast and where the Lost Coast Trail goes. This is a network of trails that stretch uh, 50 some miles along California's remote coast for backpackers and explorers who want to see California as it looked for the first pioneers who came up here. Thank you all for joining us today on the, uh, the hike to Bear Harbor, and we hope to see you out on another one of our events soon. Thank you.